Hey guys, what's going on? And I'm back again today with another installment of Overlord Explained. As I promised in my Baharuth Empire Explained video, today I will be covering the last of the human nations to border Nazarek, the Slain Theocracy. So even though they were posing as Baharuth soldiers when Ainz first met them, the Slain Theocracy is the first antagonistic force that Ainz encounters upon his arrival in the New World. Since that time, they have not shown up much in the anime, as the story has mainly focused on the Riestis Kingdom and the Baharuth Empire. Because of this, people who only watch the anime probably know the least about the Slain Theocracy among the human nations surrounding Nazarek. But that's where I come in to help you guys out. So just a quick heads up, as with my previous Overlord Explained videos, I will not be getting into plot points involving the Slain Theocracy beyond what has been shown in the anime to avoid light novel spoilers. Additionally, I will be covering the Slain Theocracy from a broad standpoint, and will avoid going into too much detail on smaller aspects for time reasons. With that being said, let's get into the video. So as I said before, the Slain Theocracy is a human nation that directly borders Nazarek to the southwest. However, unlike the Riestis Kingdom and the Baharuth Empire, which were formed around 200 years ago, the Slain Theocracy is much older. The Theocracy is one of the oldest established human nations, having a history of over 600 years. The country was originally founded due to the assistance of the first recorded group of players to enter the New World from Yggdrasil, the Six Great Gods. So the real-world definition of a theocracy is the government of a state by immediate divine guidance or by officials who are regarded as divinely guided. This applies to the slain theocracy, as their country is structured around the doctrine and religion of the six great gods, who came to be deified by New World inhabitants after their arrival from Yggdrasil. The religion itself is divided into six different sections, each designated with colors to represent the god they symbolize, and each have their own doctrines and focuses. The head of state of the theocracy is referred to as the Pontifex. Maximus, who was elected to the position by a conclave of the Cardinals. Directly beneath the Pontifex, the Cardinals themselves are the highest ranking authorities amongst the six sects of the nation. However, despite being very highly ranked within the theocracy, Cardinals do not receive wages. This policy was developed to ensure that those who wish to become Cardinals would not pursue the title out of greed. Now, despite being the highest ranking figures within the theocracy, the Pontifex and Cardinals do not have sole political power. Besides the religious authorities, the theocracy also possesses a government with executive, legislative, and judicial branches. The religious authorities are also assisted directly by a group of advisors. This includes governmental representatives from the three branches, the head of the Magical Research Institute, and the Grand Marshal, the leader of the military. These representatives, along with the Pontifex and Cardinals, make up a group known as the Supreme Council, which is the true ruling body of the theocracy. The Supreme Council meets within a sacred room where they decide policies, with every member of the council being seen as an equal, including the Pontifex during these meetings. Now, the slain theocracy revolves around humanocentric beliefs. They promote human supremacy and the discrimination of non-human races, both within their own country and in others. The military of the slain theocracy has been known to wipe out entire villages of demi-humans in observance of their doctrine. Additionally, citizens of the theocracy that possess non-human ancestry are treated as second-class citizens. While the general population follow these beliefs as teachings of the religion and national philosophy, the higher-ups of the slain theocracy view the policy as a tactic to unify humanity against the more powerful non-human races of the New World. They also realize the potential flaw in their nation's philosophy, in that it could eventually bring them into conflict with powerful non-human nations such as the Arglan Council State. Their policy of discrimination and violence towards demi- and non-humans has also drawn ire from other human nations, in particular the Riestis Kingdom and the Baharuth Empire. Additionally, the philosophy is also hypocritical, as Sershana, one of the members of the Six Great Gods and regarded as the God of Death, was a non-human undead. Another aspect of the Slain Theocracy's religion besides the worship of the Six Great Gods is the existence of Godkins, which are New World inhabitants that are descendant from the Six Great Gods. Citizens of the Theocracy hold Godkins in veneration, and the preservation of the Gods' bloodlines is a priority for the Theocracy. To make sure the bloodlines continue, the Slain Theocracy allows for select Godkins to practice polygamy. This, however, is viewed as an extremely archaic practice and is not allowed for all godkins. Additionally, the godkin is only allowed two spouses at most. An additional important aspect of the religion of the theocracy is the Miko princesses, who are powerful magic casters that are tied to each element of the six gods. Fire, water, earth, wind, light, and darkness. Miko princesses are at the heart of the slain theocracy's rituals and are necessary for their completion. Miko princesses are also denoted by their crowns of wisdom, which are powerful items considered treasures by the theocracy. In truth though, the crowns basically reduce the wearer to that of a puppet. In addition, the crown can't be removed without leaving the wearer's mind completely ruined. The detailed description of the crown that was shown in the second light novel reads, 
changes the wearer into an item that activates extremely high ranked magic. One of the crowns is also shown in Season 1 of the anime that was stolen from the Miko Princess of Earth by Clementine. Also, judging by their designation Miko, as well as the name of the capital of the theocracy being Kami Miyako, we can assume the six great gods integrated some aspects of Japanese culture into the theocracy. Now moving on to the military of the theocracy, they are considered the most powerful human military in the region. Similarly to the Baharuth Empire, they have a standing military of professional full-time soldiers which increases their quality and power. Additionally, due to the technology, items, and magic that is available to the Slam Theocracy, their knights are said to be, on average, much more powerful than those of the Empire. The Theocracy's military contains six scriptures, which are elite secret military organizations. Each of them has their own beliefs, principles, and doctrines, and each one corresponds to one of the six great gods. They are usually deployed based on the specific skill set required for the mission, but they have also been known to conduct joint operations. Five of the six scriptures have been identified in the Overlord Light novel. These include the Sunlight Scripture, which specializes in the suppression of demi-human and heteromorphic settlements and armies, the Windflower Scripture, which specializes in espionage and intelligence gathering, the Clearwater Scripture, which specializes in spying and enemy infiltration, the Firestorm Scripture, which specializes in assassination, guerrilla warfare, and counterterrorism, and the Black Scripture, which specializes in fighting particularly powerful non-human beings such as Dragon Lords. The Black Scripture is considered the trump card of the theocracy and is its most powerful scripture. Some of the Black Scripture members are also equipped with what is known as Divine Equipment, which are Yggdrasil items that were left behind by the Six Great Gods. An example being Zeshi's Scythe, which is from Yggdrasil and was likely used by the God of Death, Sershana. The only two scriptures so far that have been shown in the anime are the Sunlight Scripture, which is the group that Ainz encountered in Karn Village. <laughs> and the Black Scripture, which is the group that encountered Shaltir when she was brainwashed by the world item, Downfall of Castle and Country. Another large boon to the Slain Theocracy's military is the presence of the previously mentioned Godkins. Being descendant from players, the Godkins have much greater fighting abilities and are considered to be amongst the most powerful of New World inhabitants, being considered demigods. It is common for them to have superhuman strength and have abilities that set them apart from the rest of humanity. However, not all godkins have equivalent strength. Amongst godkins, there are those who are awakened to their strength, and those that are not. Awakened godkins are much more powerful than those that are not, and therefore the power disparity between godkins is quite large. Currently, all of the godkins that have been revealed in the series have been a part of the Black Scripture, which includes the leader of the Black Scripture and Zeshi Zetsume, who is the most powerful warrior of the Slam Theocracy. In one of the author Maruyama's tweets, he acknowledged that Zeshi is more powerful than Lupus Rugina, one of the Pallades of Nazarick who is level 59. Shaltir also assessed during their encounter that the captain of the Black Scripture was stronger than Solution, another one of the Pallades who is level 57. So while not being on par with Ainz or the Guardian NPCs, this assessment still shows that Godkins are incredibly powerful when compared to typical New World human inhabitants. The Slain Theocracy also has a very good command structure, with the ability to set up national level organizations, being one of the only countries capable of doing so. The Theocracy also possesses an institutionalized divine magic training system that is comparable to the system present in the Baharuth Empire. The Theocracy also has a focus on casting faith and divine based magic, with even the Baharuth Empire making requests for the Theocracy to share their teachings. Their rituals with the Miko princesses also allow the Theocracy to access magic that would normally be impossible for humans to achieve, having rituals that can produce 7th tier magic. On top of that, they have priests who are capable of using resurrection magic, and as stated previously, have access to several powerful items from Yggdrasil left behind by the six great gods. So in terms of personnel, skill, power, items, and magic, the Slain Theocracy outclasses pretty much all human nations in the region. Now when discussing the foreign relations of the Slain Theocracy, they have much more involved relations when compared to the Kingdom and the Empire due to their power, age, and geographical position. Being a religious state, the Theocracy has many issues with foreign nations due to religious differences. This includes the Riestis Kingdom, the Baharuth Empire, and the Robel Holy Kingdom, who have different state religions. The religion of those countries is the worship of the Four Great Gods, which is a deviation of the Slain Theocracy's religion. Also, fun fact, in the southern region of the Baharuth Empire, 
Empire, Buddhism is also present and was likely brought over to the New World from Yggdrasil. Despite these feelings, many of the human nations in the region view the theocracy as a necessary evil, as their actions have allowed human nations to grow when they would have been typically wiped out by encroaching demi-human nations. According to the author Maruyama, if the slain theocracy fell, the Riestis Kingdom, the Baharuth Empire, and the Robel Holy Kingdom will fall soon after to monsters. Now when speaking about the relations with the Riestis Kingdom, the theocracy actually helped shepherd the kingdom during their beginning in the hopes that it would allow for humanity to grow due to the natural barriers that surround the kingdom. However, this had the opposite effect that the theocracy wanted, as the peaceful lifestyle resulted in the kingdom becoming a cesspool of corruption that the theocracy wants to eradicate. However, the theocracy does not want to conquer the Riestis Kingdom, as that would leave them bordering the demi-human Arglan Council State. Instead, they plan on weakening the kingdom through espionage and small skirmishes, such as the attempted assassination of Gazef shown in Season 1 of the anime. This in turn, they hope, will lead to the Baharuth Empire conquering the kingdom. As for the aforementioned Baharuth Empire, the theocracy has been monitoring them for a long time and considers it to be the more successful nation when compared to the kingdom. This in turn motivated the theocracy to permit the empire's conquest of the kingdom. However, despite favoring the Baharuth Empire, they are still reluctant to share their teachings and divine magic with them. Additionally, since the Empire has publicly aligned themselves with Nazarik, the Theocracy has become more wary of the Empire. As for the Arglan Council State, due to the human supremacist doctrine of the Theocracy, the formation of a demi-human nation is seen as a grave threat to humanity. From a citizen's point of view, the Theocracy and Council State actively hate each other. However, despite their obvious hatred of non-humans, the leaders of the slain Theocracy recognize their military limits. They are reluctant to wage open war against the Council State due to the power possessed by members of the state, such as Platinum Dragonlord. As stated previously, they are reluctant to conquer the Riestis Kingdom as bordering the Council State would result in the population wanting to go to war with them, which would likely be disastrous for the Theocracy. As such, despite their hatred for the Council State, the Theocracy is careful when managing their relationship with them and still possess the means to open dialogues with them through Platinum Dragonlord. As for the Dragon Kingdom, similarly to the Baharuth Empire, the Theocracy provides the Dragon Kingdom with military aid against the Beastman country in exchange for tribute. The Theocracy honors this deal as they wish to help suppress the growing presence of the demi-human Beastman country in the East. The Theocracy also possesses a complicated relationship with the Robel Holy Kingdom. Due to religious differences, the relationship between them has been volatile. However, despite this, they have found common ground due to their struggles with the demi-human tribes that live within the bordering Abelion Hills. And if the word Abelion sounds familiar, you remember that scene where Demiurge called the creatures he was skinning for scroll parchment Abelion sheep? That's where the name comes from. Yeah, Demiurge is really freaking evil. Lastly, I want to talk about the Theocracy's relationship with a country I have yet to mention in any of my Overlord Explained videos, the Elf Country. Sometime in the past, the Elves and the Theocracy had a cooperative relationship. However, this changed when the Elf King tricked and kidnapped the strongest godkin of the Theocracy. Since this happened, the Theocracy and the Elf Country have been in a war that has lasted decades. The progress in the war is slow going due to most of the Elf Country being hard to traverse woodlands and the Elves using guerrilla tactics. Despite this, the slain Theocracy has the advantage in the war due to their superior military. The war has also resulted in the enslavement of Elves, which is considered a popular and expensive commodity within the Theocracy. The war is still ongoing during the story of Overlord. So, in summary, while they haven't been shown much in the anime up to this point, many of the plot points in Season 1 involve the slain Theocracy. This includes Einzen's confrontation with the Sunlight Scripture, the theft and destruction of a Crown of Wisdom, and the Black Scripture's encounter with Shaltir. Each of these encounters damaged the Theocracy and has left them short-handed. Additionally, the use of a world item on Shaltir by the slain Theocracy is indirectly responsible for the formation of the Sorcerer Kingdom, as that action motivated Einz to be more proactive and aggressive against against powers in the New World. So despite their lack of presence in subsequent seasons, the Theocracy has had a huge impact on the world of Overlord and will no doubt remain a pivotal part of the story later on. So guys, that pretty much covers the major aspects of the slain Theocracy. Since it's the strongest and oldest of the human nations I have covered, this one took much longer to go over and there were also more minor details I likely skipped over. This just goes to show you how detailed and massive the world of Overlord is and why I love diving into it so much. So I hope you guys 
enjoyed the video and if you did, please hit that like button to let me know you want to see more. Leave your thoughts on the Slain Theocracy in the comment section below. I have been loving the feedback I've been getting on Overlord Explained videos from you guys. And if you aren't already, please subscribe to the channel as it helps me out more than you know and it will also let you know when I post in the future. With that said, I want to thank you all for watching to the very end of the video and I will see you all next time. Later!